guys, Jeff here with Mitsubishi Cooling and Heating. Welcome to another episode of Tech Tips. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the problem of cross wiring on our MXZ style units. We'll take a look at some common symptoms and some good ways to fix it. Cross wiring on an MXZ multi port system can cause quite the headache and can also go unnoticed for many years. When I hear my customers saying things like, this unit needs to be on in order for this one to actually work, or this unit grossly overheats or overcools while this one never really works, that's when I start to bring up the idea of cross wiring. When the zones are crossed, indoor unit A comes on and sends a signal to the outdoor unit. But since that's hooked up to the wrong zone, it sends refrigerant to a different air handler. When we start working with cross wiring, I like to start my efforts at the indoor units. The first step I'll do is turn all indoor units to the off mode. What this does is it's gonna stop my blowers from running and my vanes from opening up. After all of my indoor units have been turned off, I'll pick one indoor unit to start with. What I'll do is push the EOS button to put it into emergency cooling. Once I've verified that the indoor unit comes on, I'm gonna let the system run for five to 10 minutes. After the unit's been running for five to 10 minutes, I'm gonna open up the indoor unit and feel the evaporator coil. If our unit is zoned correctly, we should experience a pretty full coil in either the cooling or the heating modes. We should also expect a pretty significant delta T across the indoor unit. But what happens if we really don't have a cold or a hot coil and there's no delta T? Well, it's possible that refrigerant could be going to another zone. If our indoor unit is working correctly, we're receiving a proper delta T across the indoor coil and our coil is either full cold or full hot, then that zone passes the test. However, if that zone that we've called for isn't really heating or cooling, we need to check the other zones. Luckily, we've left all the other zones in the off mode. So if we're testing this in cooling, refrigerant flowing to an evaporator coil without a blower running, you're gonna to start to see some frost buildup. That's a pretty big indicator that you've got refrigerant flowing to the wrong zone. You'll wanna repeat this process for every indoor unit. What I like to do is turn one indoor unit on at a time and go through and mark my zones. If the zones are crossed, I'll indicate what zone I'm calling for versus what zone is actually getting refrigerant. Then I can make my way to the outdoor unit to finish the repair. When it comes to repairing the cross wiring, you've got two choices. One, very easy, and one, really hard. Well, let's go over the easiest one first. The best way to fix this is to simply swap your communication cables between the affected zones. That would be your S1, S2, and S3. Now, if you really wanted to make it hard on yourself, instead of swapping the cables, you can swap the refrigerant pipes. Although, that's probably not the best idea. For additional information, please feel free to visit our website at www.mylinkdrive.com. If there's a topic you'd like to see discussed in the future, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for future episodes of Tech Tips and Homeowner Help.